we couldn't control those guys. The problem is they came ready to fight, and they got in a fight. They just started a fight with some people after. It was like a house party. And so me and my brother leave, come to find out the next day, two of my friends got arrested and got in trouble. <laughs> and But then nobody tried me ever again after that. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you going to start Welcome a Welcome to fight. Early Questionable. I'm Dan Levitard. <laughs> That's Dominique Foxworth and Bomani Jones. Let's get started. Da, 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 da. Uh. <laughs> Is LeBron starting to convince you that he deserves the MVP? I know that ESPN has been an infomercial for LeBron for a decade, but his greatness cannot be overstated. Now, understand what he's doing as these young people. I know, Bomani, you love it when it happens to the young people. He is doing the Jordan stuff of not yet young fella. He did it to Luka. He's done it to Trey Young. He's done it to Zion Williamson, where in those games, he's averaging 30, 10, and 10. And again, this is a guy who's 35 years old, whose body has so much mileage on it, and he's still doing that stuff at the rim against Zion, reminding him, hey, I've got a big body too, and I'm unusual specimen as well it's amazing to watch but no is the answer to this question Giannis has been overwhelming his team has been overwhelming he's the MVP at the same time what the Lakers are without LeBron is a negative 1.2 points per 100 possession with him it's over 12 like his impact on that team can't be overstated and last night it was kind of nuts man Anthony Davis is not playing in that game by the way another Pelicans Lakers game where Anthony Davis is a secondary figure because we now have Zion and we now have LeBron so I could see why somebody says he is the MVP but this is the same day that Giannis put up 40 25 and Five, man, the dude's got it. His team's going to win 70 games, but it almost doesn't matter at this point for making LeBron James the MVP because you know what he is? He's LeBron James. And after we gave it to Steph Curry those two years, and then the Warriors won 73 games, and then LeBron won the championship, it don't matter what MVPs you give him anymore because he's got the I'm LeBron James card. Well, I think it also matters that Giannis won it last year. This is a kind of you got to take it from the situation. And I think if he comes back and has as impressive, frankly, a more impressive season this year, Giannis, that is, than he did last year, it's hard to give it to somebody else. And I think you're right, Bo. The on-off numbers for LeBron on the Lakers is the way that you make the argument statistically or you also say that maybe he means more to the offense because he can close games and he can distribute that way. But I think, honestly, you're reaching there to give it to LeBron as much as he deserves it every season because he is the most valuable person literally to the league. He is the reason why the league's revenues probably go up more than anybody else. He's not more valuable to his team than, than Giannis is to his right now. But here's the tricky thing, man. When's the last time LeBron won the MVP? We're looking at, what, 2013 is the last time that he won it? He's so much better now, it feels like, than he was in 2013. And we haven't realistically considered him an MVP candidate in the last seven years. Somehow he gets better. What's happened is the numbers for everybody else have gotten so much better. And all of that is now so supercharged that when you put up a statistical case, the other guys have had one over LeBron. And you've had those years where LeBron has kind of mailed it in. But he's still that dude. Is he the best player in the league? Does it matter because he's LeBron James? And here's the other thing we've seen because this season has had some moments where LeBron James hasn't looked that athletic at the rim. You guys just saw yesterday all that mileage that step back off one foot is what he's going to be doing into his 40s because that's how that game is going to age. He's going to be able to step back on one foot and always make something from 25 feet. Look, man, Zion Williamson brought down the house with a dunk and LeBron came down the floor and shot what looked like a 40 footer. This is bananas. First of all, this is kind of bananas. Yep. He flexing on him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 right fast, right fast. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> like, what's that? Oh, Brandon my Ingram God. didn't even bother to put a hand up, because why would you? Are the Rockets starting to convince you that microball will work? They've been good. They've been better than they were. But I do not want to answer this part of the question because I don't think they're good enough. I will say they are simply more inventive than any team in the sport because they knew the parts the way they were assembled before weren't working. So what they did, a team that's already changed the math by realizing take more three-pointers, it's the way to play, they're going small with Russell Westbrook at the center. And Bomani, if Russell Westbrook is going to be this kind of efficient, if their system is going to work to make that player more efficient than he's ever been, 
he'd still be at Oklahoma City with Kevin Durant if he'd been that kind of efficient while next to him. It's a fascinating evolution of their basketball team. I thought we established that we were calling this little ball. We're not calling it micro ball. Didn't that, Bomani decide that it was called little ball? So, yes, the little, little ball, ball is working because it's a better option than what they were doing. They're creating more threes. I think it's 49 per game. And Russell Westbrook is scoring in the paint better than even Zion is. So, I think it is the best thing they can possibly do. But the point is, the more threes, it increases the volatility. So, they could go cold also. I think the optimistic view is that James Harden is getting a chance to rest now. And in the playoffs, he'll be able to kind of kick it up a notch in a way that he has in the past, but I actually think the playoffs, not because the pace slows down, but because teams focus on you more. I think it makes it more difficult. There's something to be said for the fact that no one plays this small, and then you have to up and kind of figure out how to play against this in the regular season. It's going to be different when someone buckles down and plays against you, and the teams they had to beat in the West are teams that I think are pretty good on perimeter defense. The two L.A. teams have big guys who I don't think you can play off the floor. Well, it's not even just about buckling down against them as much as you're going to get to play them game after game right. after game. Like, I don't know how it works out when you drop in and play them once at the time of year, but you don't get to practice that much. That's what will be different about a playoff series. But the other thing is, as much as I think you can make the argument that it's inventive for them to go to play and all these little dudes around here, do you watch them play? Because what I don't see is nobody's invention. What I see is five dudes standing around waiting for somebody to give them the ball. I don't see no movement. I don't see no cutting. I don't see no plays. It is just super duper isolation ball. And it is very difficult for me to believe that you're going to be able to go all the way to the NBA finals playing ball like that with all those guys being that small because they're going to wear down when those little dudes actually have to guard bigger ones. This is what I do believe, though, is inventive. They've got Russell Westbrook basically playing the center, Bo, and he's a 50% or more maker now, whereas he's one of the worst three-point shooters by volume in the history of the league. So they've taken, if I told you before the season, Westbrook is a center, I don't know that we could have imagined it. Oh, no, I thought coming into this year that Russell Westbrook was done. What amazes me, keeping in mind, this is a dude whose free throw percentage was dropping by double digits year over year, right? Like, it looked like his legs are done. We're still at a place where nobody can stop him from getting to the basket, and now they're doing something that makes it to where there's nobody parked in the lane. But I feel like in the playoffs, P.J. Tucker's going to get a lot more chances to take all the open threes he <laughs> wants. And if he makes them, the rest of the league's in trouble. If not, there's going to be somebody waiting on Russ in the paint. There are some circumstances, though, around Little Ball where you're still sort of wishing for Nene to be there when things like this happen at the end of your game and, you, and Jason Tatum just missing and you're so small that oh. this happens to tie the game late because everyone <laughs> – you could put some of the big guys in in that situation, couldn't you? Wow, I did not realize until right now that I must have fallen asleep before the end of this game. Wow, that was a great play. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I watched this game. <laughs> Somehow I had no idea that happened. Steph Green still in the league. Yo, how? <laughs> People still hoping, boy. 13 years, fingers still crossed. Good for him. Should NFL players be salty that Tony Romo is making $17 million per year? Didn't you negotiate this uh, CBA, Dominique Foxworth, where these players are right when Michael Thomas is looking at this and saying, how the heck is a guy who, by the way, is working 17, 18, 19 weeks a year, making more than I make with my body out here? I think the one who's saltiest might be Jim Nance, but after that, I understand if players are looking at this and saying, this isn't any kind of reasonable when you consider this. I know the bodies in the NFL are pretty disposable, but if I told you right now there's a game tomorrow and it's a football game you want to watch, Tony Romo's not moving those ratings. He's not someone who at $17 million a year is actually going to bring that volume of audience. This was just a prestige move between ESPN and CBS trying to hire the it guy. So Tony Romo as a player at that high paid position averaged $9 million a year. And I'm looking at this, Dominique, and the deal you guys made with us is actually open. You're worth twice as much as the players. I mean, Tony Romo exists in an actual free market where there is not a union that provides antitrust protection for the essentially, which is a cartel. If we did the same thing, which I've advocated for, decertify the union and open the league up, the antitrust law will have the same situation. No draft, true free agency. We can get all this bread. There's also no floor on the salaries either. So might get undercut for some guys who just want to get in the league and put on the helmet. Yeah, no, I got exactly where Michael Thomas is coming from, though, because what we're saying is, yo, there's clearly bread out here that y'all could be giving people. You're trying to limit how much bread you can give us, and if somebody's willing to give somebody all this bread 
to talk about us. I understand where he's coming from, even if he's just a little bit misguided. Dan just kind of touched on it, though, man, and I really hadn't thought about it. If you are Jim Nance, you have got to be asking for the biggest raise in the world. I am the face of this. And you know why Jim Nance is the face of that, all their broadcasts? Because Jim Nance sound like money. Jim Nance get up there in that blazer with that eye on it, and you tell, man, money is in the house. Jim Nance at the Masters. Money has shown up. Now money walks in the room, and Big Bank is this cat who just got here. I've been doing this for 30-something years, and now this dude who was out here throwing a football is making more bread than me. Either Jim's going to get a raise, or it's going to be tense as hell up in that booth. And the reason why people say they like Tony Romo is exactly because he don't sound like money. He sounds like a guy you're watching a game with. That's an interesting dynamic for Jim Nance to have to swallow. But, of course, I'm with the players who I think deserve more money. But when we were negotiating that deal, I was ready to lock out. I was ready to miss checks. Yeah. That's what you got to do to get that money. That aside, rather than hating on it, accept the game as it is and play it right. Some of y'all need to quit playing football right now and go straight to the booth. I'm looking at you, Baker Mayfield. You got a <laughs> lot of personality. You understand offense. You can make more in the booth if you hop out right now. I'm looking at you, Richard Sherman. Very smart guy. Oh, they oh, seem wow. to really like you. You know a lot nice. of football. Get out of there. Get in the booth. Make that 17. I feel like there are plenty of guys, as, as much as fun as Tony Romo is, there are plenty of guys who I think yeah. would be as intelligent about the game as him and far more entertaining. Y'all need to get out the league and get this bread. And let me get a little bit, too. Coming up next on my Soul Stevie show. 16-year vet. Wow. Oh, see, there you go. You're not doing that to me. No, you're not doing that to me. Look, let me tell you what the best part of this is. He decided before the game, oh, yeah. if this dude think he's going to try that with me, watch what happens. That ain't just some natural reaction. To play the game that thinks Dan could beat Tony Reale in a 40-yard dash. Do you question? Oh, really? Oh. Nice. You seen him uh, run? Nice positive one for me. You think I can beat Reale? You guys give us topics and events. We question it. More negative on him than positive on you. I mean. Do you question if this makes you more or less confident that Tom Brady will be a Patriot next season? All right, this was funny. At Syracuse basketball game, it's Jimmy Fallon, it's Edelman, it's Tom Brady. And it sounds like Edelman is saying he's coming back. And it sounds like Tom Brady is saying he's not. But we're going to dig a little deeper here, see what we find. Listen up. He's coming back. He's coming back. <laughs> this is crazy. What's your start? What's your real start? What'd you, what'd you tell Bayheim? Yeah. You got it. Well, it's not. He's not. It's he's got it. But what do you guys make of this that happened a little bit later where Vrabel, of all the coaches to FaceTime, FaceTiming Vrabel, one of the coaches who might want him. Look at this. We are voyeurs today, just creeping around in Tom Brady's privacy. Yo, they whack for that. They're like extra whack for that. Okay, he FaceTime with Mike Vrabel. What do I make of all of this? People are whack. Julian Edelman, you whack. Why you out here trying to make life hard on your homeboys? Hard enough for him to just go enjoy a basketball game as it is. Now you got to be out here trying to create drama. The snoop in the back, sending all that stuff out of there. <laughs> I have never been more Team Tom Brady ever than right now because he looked at Julian Edelman like, I will swear, little man, I will elbow you. <laughs> Yeah, after all I've done for you is what he right. probably should have said to him. But I agree with you, and I, I've come to believe or not be able to believe anything that Tom Brady does around this because it feels like everything's a bit of a publicity stunt. And the fact that Jimmy Fallon's there also, like, is this just them filming something to prepare for some sort of late-night show? Like, I don't believe any of that. The only thing that seemed genuine was them catching Mike Vrabel, but he knows there are people behind him. He knows how FaceTime works. Like, I'm not sure that this is not just another ploy by Tom Brady to keep himself in the news to set up for his eventual career transition into being like a social media influencer whatever he's angling for yeah, by the way has anybody answered the question why in the world were they at that game right like how long ago did you buy these tickets and you're just so dead set on going to watch two bad basketball teams in a place that when you bought the tickets you probably had to guess was really really cold <laughs> that's not the only question why are you FaceTiming? Like, I, I don't, I only know one other grown man I love who, FaceTime. who FaceTimes I love FaceTime. me. I do love to who FaceTime. FaceTime. I FaceTime my kids, my wife occasionally. I like to FaceTime. I don't what? FaceTime. Oh, you're people. down on FaceTime? I like to see people's face when I'm talking to <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, but you like to do it without warning. Ain't no telling what this face is up to. Well, that, that's why I don't do it to you. I know better. You ain't never gotten a FaceTime from me. I know you were that's not a answering point. that. That's a great point. You know that's a little bit beyond our intimacy threshold. <laughs> 
Do you question if Trey Young had this coming? It's not a trick question, guys. Trevor Ariza, where's he playing? Where you got him? Do you got him at the right team? Do you know uh, where Trevor Ariza is this year? It's um, they're red. Is he still yes. in Washington? Uh, no, that no, was a couple he's of not, He's ago. not in Houston either. He's no, he's no, still he's in Portland. He's Port in Portland, I and I know red. that only because I, had it in my head. I was watching a game the other day. I'm like, oh, there's Trevor Ariza. I didn't know that. Now there's a. History, though, before we get to Trevor Ariza of Trey Young nutmegging people, let's play that montage of him doing Ooh. this. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Got yeah, him. he does it to Ricky Rubio there, makes that look very Animal. easy. This is J.J. Redick. He's going to do oh, it, too, there. that was the worst yeah. one. That was preseason, wasn't it? He makes it look so easy. So let's see what happens to Trevor Ariza here of the Portland Trailblazers. 16 years vet. <laughs> oh, see, there you go. You're not doing that to me. No, you're not doing that to me. <laughs> Look, let me tell you what the best part of this is. He decided before the game, oh, yeah. if this dude think he's going to try that with me, watch what happens. That ain't just some natural reaction. That is a, I decided it was going to happen. I mean, I don't have a problem with any of this, honestly. Like, I, I tend to think that you shouldn't retaliate in situations like that. Just close your legs or play better defense. But also think, like, he took the foul. He wanted to send a message. That's fine. Nobody got hurt. They didn't rise to fisticuffs. And it's, it's incumbent upon Trey Young. At this point, you got to do it again. Like you must. It goes back to the whole chain snatching situation. You can't tuck your chain back in. You got to go back and try to make him again. You have to, or else you've lost. <laughs> and show Trey Young at the end right there again <laughs> as he tries to act like, yeah, yeah, I'm bigger than this. He was shook as hell. Look at look at his yeah. face yes. after he yes. gets that push. Yes. Right, right, <laughs> right. Like, 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 look at him. Look at him. Okay, oh, I'm okay. good. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Okay. <laughs> play the game they can't wait to start paying attention to college basketball next week see <laughs> or no tell us what's on television we'll tell you if we're intrigued or not in progress spring training baseball angels and cubs i'm not sure how much these two gentlemen here are interested in watching uh, mike trout hit a baseball but can i interest you in mike trout hitting a golf ball are you curious what that would look like because Joe Madden is saying this is 150 feet high, the fence that this is climbing over. Wow. The netting, I should have said, instead of the fence. So that's 220 yards. Uh, how about you, Bomani? Are you intrigued in this? Eh, I mean, not especially, but hey, who doesn't want to believe in miracles every now and then, right? So, okay, yeah, you hit it over the, the 500-foot fence, whatever it was. Man, that fence is 1,000 feet off the ground. Mike Trout hit the ball over it. This will be a part of his legend, the legend that includes being one of maybe the 10 best baseball players ever, and none of us have gone out of our way to watch him play a single I game. Mean, it is. It's sad. Dominique, how about you? Are you intrigued? I'm, at, I'm intrigued to see him try different things like that because it's really impressive. Any of us who've ever tried to swing a golf club, to be able to swing it hard and accurate, accurately is impossible, and people People train their whole lives to be able to do that. It doesn't. I don't imagine that he has. But I guess the skills from baseball are transferable. It's impressive just to see him swing that thing real hard and hit it real hard. I'm a simple dude. Just for context, I do think we can find a lot of baseball players who could do things like this. Look at Cody Bellinger. You guys tell me if Cody Bellinger is doing it any differently than any power hitter in that game would do it. Jeez. Wow. Oh, that hit the hotel. I tell you this, though, anybody that's tried to play some golf will tell you, like, baseball training will mess up your golf swing, and this is actually more impressive than people realize it is. They ain't the same thing. Tomorrow afternoon, Mets and Marlins. Did you guys know that Tim Tebow is playing in the World Baseball Classic for the Philippines? He's on yes, that I team. know. Uh, A friend told me. All right, so he was hitting 163 in AAA, but uh, he's still in AAA, and let's check in. Here recently with Tim Tebow trying to make the last out of the game. Oh, oh no. Oh, God. That, oh, oh. That stinks. That, oh, you got to catch that somehow. Uh, Bomani, are you intrigued? No. I just, I just want to remind y'all that this dude graduated from high school 14 years ago, and he's still out here chasing dreams. And I don't blame him because people are willing to spend money to allow him to do so.
How about you, Dominique? Are you intrigued? <laughs> I'm also not intrigued, but we should accept that he's not out there because he's a good baseball player, he's a good athlete. To Bobani's point, I'm not mad at him. You use what you got. Whatever cachet you've built up, you better sell it till they ain't buying it no more because I don't know what other talents he has. Yeah, but tell me this. Like, is he checking into his own hotels on the road? Because I can't imagine with all that money he got, he's trying to sleep on them scratchy sheets that his partner's got to sleep on when they go travel. <laughs> We're done. We have no more time here, but if you want some more Dominique Foxworth, you check him out at The Undefeated. And Bomani Jones, it's a really good podcast. The right time with Bomani Jones. Download it. Dan, I got three letters for Tim Tebow. X, F, L. Yes, yes. <laughs> that would spike up the rating. Yo, that would kill a whole lot of people's dreams. Tim <laughs> Tebow throw three interceptions in the XFL game, and everything they've been convincing themselves of for the last nine years is nonsense.